And we are really excited to have one of our favorite friends and artists who has bringing us his latest CD, and it's an amazing CD. His name is John Blackwell, and the CD is called Forever Gia, John Blackwell Project. And you just listened to the lead off track, High Performance, from Mr. John Blackwell and his project. So welcome to the show, brother. Oh, thank you, man. It's good to be back. JBP. Yeah, that's right, JBP. And, and we should remind our listeners, we have a, a link right up on all our websites, johnblackwellproject.com. Um, nicely done website, but uh, most importantly, the music is, is smoking. So um, let, let's talk about recording a record in, betwi- in between all your world tours with Prince and Justin Timberlake and, and so many others. How, how do you get a, a record done? Uh, <laughs> well, you know, usually uh, half I would come off the road or have a break from touring with people like you know, Prince or Cameo or Justin or anybody, you know, I, I would usually come home and just, you know, relax or if I have, if I hear a song in my head, I'll just go, I'll go into my little pre-production studio and write it out if I have an idea or something like that. Um, this time around, after, well, I guess after 2004, after uh, I lost after I lost Gia, um, I um, I was hearing a lot of songs in my head that I wanted to do for her, and also songs that I just had in my my head for some time. And uh, I I started trying to you know do projects and and uh, find some musicians to record with. Uh, to to get these you know songs done and and to put out a record in honor of of Gia, uh, it it took six years you know since since uh, 2004 it's been it's been like six years going that I finally got this um, I finally got it done right, right. and uh, it, it, you know I've got, getting it done to where I was pleased and where I'm happy to where I'm thinking, okay, this is the record that I could dedicate to, you know, my family, to, 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 you know, to all the people that support me in my career, but most importantly to, to Gia, and, um, and just, uh, in general, just, you know, just have a, a, a record that's satisfying that I think that people would love and support, and, you know, something that everybody would cater to, you know, is, is you know, an album where no one can be sad or disappointed about it. It's, every, it's something for everybody on this record. Yeah. I didn't want it to be one genre. I didn't want it to be just jazz. I didn't want it to be just funk. I didn't want it to be just hip-hop or anything. I wanted, that, I wanted it to have everything that anyone could ever ask for on the record, except country. <laughs> yeah, you got to call John on on his uh his personal phone. We, we're not going to give that out, but his his uh, answer machine has some country music, which threw threw me for a loop yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, you know, that's a, new, that's a new phone I got, so I I gotta make it make a uh, uh, reminder myself to go to T-Mobile and, and get it functified. <laughs> yeah, get some JPP on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so John Blackwell is on our show right now and uh one of many times we always love to have John on the show and and you dedicate dedicate the record to your angel G and and you know through the pictures and to my mom too. Oh yeah, that's I right. My mom last year. Yeah, so so some great ladies in your life and you know t- tell us about you know you know have, having uh dear family members pass away and, and you know I, I was always amazed how you, you continued uh, the musicology tour and kept on and you know how how do you you know get through life with with uh things going through li- life like that well i i did it for you know many reasons uh that i continued after g i i actually honestly i was going to i was just going to say you know the heck with it i wasn't going to play 
drums anymore. Wow. I was actually going to just say, forget it, I'm done. And my dad, who's a, you know, who's a big inspiration in my life and a drummer, he, um, after the funeral, he, he told me, he said, he said, son, he said, don't you sit around this house and, and mope and, you know, and just, you know, go downhill. He said, you get, get your tail back out there on them drums and you, you play every night for, for Gia. You know, just do it for her because she loved, she loved when you played drums. She was, you know, I actually really believed that if she was still here, she would, she would be, she would be on the drums right now because she, it was in her, you know, she had it in her. You know, I, I took her to a NAMM show and every time I gave her the stick, she was, she was banging away on, on everything that I pointed, I, I put her in that direction and she just kept, Hitting all kinds of stuff and and you know just trying to do some fast things and I was just like wow this she has it right right so, so uh, which is another reason because of that that I, I established a scholarship at Berkeley in honor of her and in, in honor of her you know for for you know a scholarship that would help female musicians or or just you know musicians in general who who are talented and young and need, you know, need money to go to school to continue their, you know, their craft, you know, and it would be in, you know, it would be a way of Gia helping other people. So you have, uh, I believe, later on this year, the second annual uh, yeah, scholarship concert. It's, it's, the, I, I'm starting to remember how, how the first one was a gigantic, uh, you know, responsibility and headache. Oh, you yeah. know, it was a great show watching it. It was a great show, but putting it together was just that was the hard part. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, we're we're still in the works of putting that together. A lot of people are already wanting to be a part of it, so um, it's coming together. And hopefully, we we already. I think we've already locked down December ninth as the date that that's when it's going to be and. A lot of people are already on board. And, you know, the John Blackboard Project will be there uh, performing, and Charlie Singleton is going to join us. Uh, uh, Little John Roberts, who plays with Janet Jackson, and uh, he's the drummer on the Monique Show, and and uh, Rochelle Farrell's drummer, and anybody else you could ever think of in the industry, he's on board, and Sonny Emery's on board, uh, who's played with Earth, Wind & Fire, Bette Midler, and his own uh, group, the Hypnofunk, and uh, and we're trying to get Steve Gadd. Oh wow! Yeah. And um, I, I believe, and you know, I believe if we're trying to get some singers as well. Um, we want to have more singers this year. Whereas the last time we did it, we had ten million drummers. Uh, Looked like Parliament Funkadelic on stage last time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rotating. That's There's right. So many drummers, you yeah. know, but try to equal it out this year so uh, our guest right now Mr. John Blackwell and his latest CD Forever Gia from the John Blackwell Project we'll come back and talk more about some of the cats in the project and uh, you can go to his website johnblackwellproject.com and, and before we get into the next track uh, why don't you tell the listeners where they can get the CD or download tracks uh, you can purchase the John Blackwell Project at iTunes uh, cdbaby.com and digstation.com and um, very soon uh, if not already I don't know uh, I haven't checked with my lawyer yet um, amazon.com right you talked about Charlie Singleton uh, guitarist and vocalist from Cameo AK The Phantom he worked with you on a couple tracks and we're going to get into one right now amazing so um, how did you and Charlie collaborate on this um, me and Charlie, uh, I've, been, I've been friends with Charlie, uh, since 1995, and actually, you know, my, when I was at, I was going to school at Berkeley, and then I got a call from Cameo to, uh, go on tour with them, and, uh, I had to ask my father, of course, and my father said yes, and, and the day I was leaving to go on the road with Cameo, my father told Charlie and Larry Blackman and all those guys to uh, make sure that they take good care of me and look out for me and that I wouldn't get into crazy things or, you know, I, you know the things that you can get into out there on that road. And, um, you know, they, they looked out for me, but... 
but Charlie was the main one that really, really um, took care of me out there. And um, and we've been friends since, you know. We've been friends for since 1995. And, and I finally, when I wanted to do my record, he said that he would love to to be a part of it and help me um, get it done. So, I, you know, like I said, I, have a, I mean, I have a little pre-production in my house. And I write out little parts that I have ideas for. And being a big cameo fan, I always wanted to have a track that had that cameo sound. So I called Charlie up one night and said, "Hey, man, uh, check out this, uh, you know, this this idea I have." And he said, "Man, that's that's cool, man." He said, "Send it over." So I sent it over. He, you know, he would put his little parts in there, and then he wrote some lyrics out for it. And ended up, you know, he, he's him and, him and Prince are on the same level, uh-huh. you know. I mean, the only difference is Prince is Prince, Charlie is Charlie. Right, right. You know, but they both geniuses. I mean, they both play several different instruments, and they can record a record with, without anyone else being there. And Charlie, that's what Charlie did. He he recorded all the parts that I I had ideas for and I played. He, he played them better like they were supposed to be played, you know, and uh, he did all the vocals, all the lead vocals, and then he sent the track back to me, and I was just like, I, I know I didn't write this, this is crazy, <laughs> he, he just turned it into something really hot, um, and then um, once he sent it back, I, I went into the studio with, you know, and I recorded it um, in Oxnard, California, I recorded Amazing. I recorded amazing there, and um, or pretty much I just laid the drums out. That Charlie had already sent everything that was done, so I just had to play drums to it. And um, we we got it done, and we sent it. You know, he sent it back to Charlie again. He added a couple of clap sounds that you know he added that cameo clap sound on top of my snare drum and and uh, some percussion things, and, and it came out. It came out great, you know. Yeah, we're we're gonna. Yeah, if I if I did, if I wouldn't have known any better, I would have thought this would have been on a, a cameo record or something. <laughs> but but it's got John Blackwell and Charlie Singleton all yeah, mixed up. Know, it, it's just me and Charlie. It, it, it like when me and Prince did Rainbow Children was just me and Prince on the Rainbow Children. Right, right. And uh, Amaze, uh, you're the one, uh, which is another track me and Charlie recorded together. Uh, it was the same the same concept, you know, we just did the same thing, except I recorded the drums here in, in Tampa, Florida. All right, we've got uh, John Blackwell with us and uh, his website, johnblackwellproject.com. We're going to come back and speak more with John, but uh, it's time to get funky. This is John Blackwell Project and Charlie Singleton of Cameo with Amazing. And, of course, that is, that's Ultra Funky from the John Blackwell Project, uh, co-written and produced with his buddy charlie singleton and uh it's called amazing john blackwell is with us and uh we were talking uh earlier in the interview about how difficult it is to to get an album put together while you're traveling across the world and and drumming with prince and justin timberlake and and many others you know you want to elaborate a little more on that right yeah um just to get down to the gist of everything i mean as far as doing that and being on the road uh, for many years, you know, I mean, even before the, uh, before before the passing of Gia, I always wanted to do my own record. You know, being inspired by Tony Williams and being inspired by Billy Cobham and so many other greats, Dave Wicko and Steve Gadd and all those guys who have their own groups as being drummers. Um, I always wanted to get this get get something done and. It seemed like every time I had the idea of going to to record, I um, always had this. I always got a call, you know, which was good because I had to pay the bills. Right, right. And um, but every time I would think about doing, it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get this done. Put it in, um, John. Um, we're going on the road. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> and then next thing you know, I'm on the road for however long, and then you know the whole record idea just goes out the window but finally uh, last year when I was working with Prince again in 2009 um, I had to pretty much go do it the sneaky way you know which when we wasn't rehearsing I was you know the whole band was out there in LA and, and Oxnard and I had to like just run across to, to Oxnard from LA record and then race back to to, to LA, race back to LA to 
to get to rehearsals at Prince's um, house that he was um, that he had out there um, for a split minute. Uh, I don't know. If, I don't know if it was his house or not. I have no idea. But right, you know, right. it was his house at that time. So uh -huh. uh, we had rehearsals there. So every time there wasn't a rehearsal, I was racing back and forth to to uh, Oxnard to to record this record. So. Uh, that's how, that's how I got it done. That's how I finally got the record done. I just had to go on that on that download and, <laughs> and just run back and forth, you know. Yeah. Like, what are you doing right now, John? Uh, uh I'm just just chilling. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, hold on for a second. Uh, we're gonna do another take. Uh, yeah, I'll call you back. <laughs> now, now let me ask you uh, about you know you you've uh, toured and recorded with Prince for oh, many many oh, years. Many years. Yeah, that's, that's right. 99, I've been, he, was, uh, he was bringing me around since uh, 99 when I was with Patti LaBelle. And, and, and you're, you're his first called drummer and, you know. Um, I was. I don't know. If, I, I really don't know where I stand. <laughs> and and, and, and I, I got to say, even if, even if I am not first called or even if I'm not on his roster anymore, I, I got to say thank you to him, you know, for everything that, you know, he's helped me with and that he's taught me that I've learned and that I got a chance to experience with him. It's a big honor. Right. You know, I, I've been, I've always wanted to play with him since I was a little boy. You know, I always wanted to play with Prince. And one of my friends actually told me, one day you will play with him. When we were eight years old, he said, one day you're going to play for Prince or Michael Jackson. And I was just like, you know, they said, if you had a choice, who would you play for? And I said, Prince. Mm -hmm. And they asked why, and I said, because he's a musician. And not that Michael's not, but, you know, I, I was more, I was more keen on on Prince, you know, you know, the, the way he, the way his music was, you know, and the style that he played, but, you know, if I, if I, if Michael was the, if if I got a, if it was, if it was my, if it was the other way around and it was Michael, I'd still be, you know, really uh, uh, excited and, and like a dream come true. But I'm glad it was, I'm glad it was Prince, you know. Uh, of of all the uh, the songs you played uh, with Prince live in concert, do do you have a couple that? Every time you played it, you you'd think to yourself, "Man, this is why I'm in the business." Or the goosebumps would be going. Yeah, um, always, uh, I always loved controversy, and and of course, Prince probably, if he was listening, he probably would have guessed. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> yeah, why so? That's all I talk about to him. I just, I really think that album was like a, it was a big turn point for him. You know, it was like a pre-Purple Rain, uh, pre-1999. It was one of those records that just stands out. It's like, it's an album that it won't, it won't ever die. I don't think it won't ever die. Um, I, I was in Miami the other day doing this uh, drum sampling project. And I was, I had a couple, had a little downtime before the, between the recordings. And, and I was riding down South Beach and I was blasting controversy out with my windows wide open. <laughs> that that's um, great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I got a quick funny was, yeah. you know, you know, a lot of people don't they don't like to blast old school music, but I was blasting it. I was like, yo. Yeah. This this is, this, this, this this track could still be if they put that out today it it, it it sell like hotcakes, I think. Right. And and less work it was it was another favorite and off the same um, record, yeah. Huh? Off the same record. Off the same record. You know, that was my record. Controversy was the record, you know, for me, you know. And then, you know, Dirty Mind. But, the, the, I mean, we would jam, sometimes we would jam ahead and uh, sound check without vocals, of course. Right, right. Um, just me, Rhonda, and, and keyboards just blasting away at sound check. He would ask us to do it, you know, as an instrumental so and sound check. Uh -huh. And, you know... I just it would have been a treat to actually have done that song live, you know. You but, have to, I guess, I guess it'd have to re like days, re those <laughs> days are a wishful thinking, I would think. Yeah, never, <laughs> probably never to be seen again. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I, well I, you were talking about controversy album and i got a quick funny story about that my mom and well probably my mom bought it for me for christmas years well that's how, that's how i got it yeah so i go up in my room open it i put it close my door and start playing and blasting and it comes to the lord's prayer in the middle of the song my mom's knocking on the door Uh-oh. saying <laughs> well yeah you know she didn't know what kind of record it was she just knew i was in the prince and she's like what's going on in that song so i had to explain it to her so <laughs> i didn't let her hear uh sexuality oh uh, no i didn't yeah she took it away from me <laughs> no no i still had it <laughs> uh, yeah because that was that was my chris that was our christmas present for me and my sister oh wow yeah you know we had we had record players you know so my dad he you know my dad gave he gave uh he bought controversy and he bought the times first album for us yeah. at the same time yeah but when they when prince came to town they wouldn't let us go oh really okay they took my cousin and they went and then they left us with our aunt and she had to babysit us <laughs> oh wow we were and, and we were crying we was like we want to go please but they were like uh-uh you ain't yeah. going to see no prince yeah because you're young then man, so. 1999 came out they came to he came back to town, back to the babysitter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, that's, you know, come on. And I, I got a hold of some some videos um, from Japan uh-huh. of the controversy tour like a couple years ago. Because uh, Japanese, I don't know how they get a hold of this stuff, but they get a hold of it. Right, right. And I, I bought one, and, and I it was a DVD, and I bought it, and I checked it out. And I said, oh, I see why they didn't let us go to the show. Oh, yeah, there was some crazy <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I was like, I see why they didn't let us go to 1999. Our controversy, I understand now. Yeah, yeah. And, and a little bit of Purple Rain. It was corrupted big time. Right, right. I mean, I was already, I was, I mean, it was, it was bad enough I was already going to school, stealing my dad's trench coat uh-huh. and my sister's eyeliner trying to draw a mustache. <laughs> and with my jerry curl and all yeah. that stuff you know trying, oh, to, yeah. <laughs> trying to look like the man <laughs> I think if I would have saw that show I don't know man yeah you would have gone full tilt <laughs> it would have been it would have been downhill from there <laughs> right. uh, we're, we're here with John Blackwell reminiscing about uh, all the all the times of purple music and of course his latest project the John Wall Black the John Blackwell project which is I'm available well <laughs> yeah I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm tangled all over there so <laughs> johnblackwellproject.com and uh, we should get into uh, another track this is a real nice slow piece uh, No Ordinary Day which features uh, bassist and vocalist on this Esperanza Spalding she, she's uh, a Berkeley alum like you right? yeah she is I, I rem- actually I, I remember every year ever since I ever since I've been on the road and working with Cameo Patty and Prince and whoever else I always go back to the school and teach and help out Berkeley, you know, as best I can. And I remember going back and forth and seeing Esperanza walking around and playing and, and then next thing you know, come back another year, she was she wasn't there. She was she was still going there but they she was already on the road performing with big jazz artists, so you know, I mean, it's 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 it's, it's a good feeling being able to see, you know, see her come from that point to now to where she is now, and she's she's phenomenal, and uh, you know she's great. And plus, you know, I played on her record as well. Oh, okay. We did a trade off. You know, she played on mine, and I played on hers. And we're both big Minnie Ripperton fans. Me and Esperanza, are. Uh-huh. and she um, actually redid Perfect Angel over um, by Minnie Ripperton, and I and she wanted me to play on the track, being. You know, uh, Wolf was being big fans of that. You know, so it was a big honor to be on her record as well. All right, we're gonna give it a listen right now. Esperanza, vo- uh, Esperanza Spalding on vocals, John Blackwell uh, on drums, and we'll talk about all the great musicians in the John Blackwell project after this next song. This is No Ordinary Day. John Blackwell is with us right here on the Upper Room with Joe Kelly and WVOF. That's called No Ordinary Day, and it's from our special guest, John Blackwell, and his latest uh, album is called Forever Gia, in memory of his daughter. Uh, The John Blackwell Project, you can go to their official website, johnblackwellproject.com, to read more about John and his band, and of course, to order the CD with all the links up there. Now, 
you're a world class musician and you've gathered some of the finest in in your your circles on this record tell tell us about a few of the players in the John Blackwell project um the main the, the core members of the group is uh the great Will Lee on bass who you can see every night on David Letterman's show and he also has you know played with you know Steely Dan and and so many other people uh, um Dean Brown and and Sly and the Family Stone I mean he's played with everybody you know, and Paul Schaefer who's you know his right hand man on the David Letterman show uh Paul Pesco, who's, who, who has played with Hall and Oates, and um, he's played with, he was the musical director for Madonna on the Virgin Tour and a couple of other tours for her. Um, uh, Paul's also, he was a part of the system. Yeah, one of my favorite groups, yeah. And uh, now he's back with Hall and Oates, but he, you know, and he's, he's still part of JBP. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, we we all have a lot of things that we do differently outside the group. And uh, a young, uh, we got a new young gun who I discovered at Berkeley uh, playing at a club called Wally's. Uh, his name is Corey Bernhardt. And uh, he's a phenomenal keyboard player, Harvard graduate also. And then the special guest uh, on um, on the record is, uh, is Charlie Singleton from Cameo. Um, Esperanza Spalding, David Garfield, uh, who's played with Charisma and has played with Toto and everybody else you can think of. Uh, David Mann from the Tower of Power on horn, on the saxophone. And uh, Michael Landau, the great Michael Landau, greatest, one of the baddest guitars you can ever want to have in your group. And, uh, and, um, uh, who else is on the record? <laughs> um, oh yeah, Sue Quinn, uh, my attorney, my attorney, my attorney manager, uh, sister, um, Paul Quinn's sister, uh, Sue Quinn. Right. She's she's singing uh, on Jada. Right, right. So, and, and plus there are uh, and Louise Conte, who's played with Madonna as well. Oh okay. Yeah. And, and there's a bunch of musicians who uh, would have loved to be on the record, but because of not being schedules and stuff like that you know because you know I, i've seen comments people made they they're they'll, they'll be on the next record i'm sure yeah yeah i i, I talked to um I, I wanted i wanted i wanted to play on ronda smith's record uh-huh. and telepop but uh couldn't find we couldn't find a time to to do something so that went out the window when we was talking the other day and I've got to have her on the next one, and I'm, I'm hoping to be on her next album as well. And I'm um, talking with a few other people about the next album. I'm already working on it. Of course, Charlie will be back. You know, you know, we already we're already working on new music. You know, instead of waiting around for the rec- how, see how this record does, we, we're still uh, we're, we're still recording and getting things ready for another album. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the mind of Jay, which I, uh, f- for those who don't know about John Blackwell, um, y- you got a big start when you were playing in it as a drum major, right? Say it again. When, when you were playing in the marching band, right? I, the mind of Jay. Some some of that song reminds me of maybe some of the the days when you were back in school in, in the uh, in the band. Oh, you thinking about high performance? Yeah, I don't know, I, that too, but I was thinking part of it, j- j- maybe it's just me, but the mind of Jay had a little bit on it too. <laughs> maybe that's not why I'm a oh, musician. I don't know if I should even tell you what that song is about. Actually. Oh, you can. Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, it's a new day. Me and my ex-wife are good friends now. Uh-huh. We're cool. Yeah, right. Um, and she's moved on, and of course I moved on, you know, so she, yeah, I guess she won't mind letting, me, letting people know that, yeah, that's, that album was, that, that song, I'm sorry, Mind of Jay is was written for my ex-wife. Oh, okay, I gotcha. It was written while we were still married, and it was written about how one minute she could be very sweet, and the next minute she's acting the fool. 
Oh, okay. It was all it was all the different moods, and you know it was like because you know for me her mind just shifted gears every other split second, and and so when you hear that song, when you hear it's done. into a different mood oh okay and then of course at the end right right it goes crazy you know dan, dan, dan. <laughs> that, that, that was the uh the crazy part of her but i edited that song so much so you really couldn't you really have to listen and understand where i'm coming from but if i if i had left the full version of that song on you would be like man uh -oh. why'd you stay in that marriage that long <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, you know, I've been married before too. I, I'm a second wife and happy, but you know, I, I know how it is too. Yeah, so, yeah, right. You got, you got, you got a, the mind of blah blah blah. Whatever. I didn't want to put her. I had, at first I had her name, her whole name on there, but instead of you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want to. Um, and I thought about it. I said, man, let me just put her initial. Right. <laughs> and I'm sure my ex-wife well, could, could write us. Know, yeah. if, you, if I don't tell you, you won't know. Right, right. That is about her. You probably think, oh, the mind of Gia or the mind of John. Or, right, right. <laughs> the mind of Joe or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, hey, well, talk about the new love of your life. Uh, well, I'm going to keep, I, I'm going to keep that on the low. Okay. I, I, I mean, I can say this. I will say this. I mean, it's it's night and day from where I've been, you know. And I, I, I love, I, you know, I love my kids, my my children, are my life. You know, she's my life too. And and you know, even though things didn't work out for me and you know my ex, you know, she's still cool. And and of course, you know, thank thankful for you know, the children, you know. But um, I used to run my mind a lot a long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, about everything in my life and everything that was going on, going doing things that are happening. And I, had, I learned the hard way, certain things you have to just keep personal and keep to yourself, you know, and which is why, you know, a lot of things I don't talk about anymore, you know, because it's, it's not really other people's uh, business or, or it's not really for other people to to know, you know, because, I mean, you keep, you keep certain things to yourself. And, and, and that's, that's something I learned from, from, from a long time ago. I mean, from all, all the things that happened with me and my ex, you know. Right, right. You know, just running my mouth to everybody. And it's just like this poison spreads after that. And things just get go south and go rotten and stuff. And I don't, I, you know, I, I believe if I, if I just talk, you know, if I do whatever I do in public as far as my work as a drummer and all that stuff, that stuff can be, uh, you know, shown and talked about. But the, the, the inside John Blackwell and the people that are involved in John Blackwell's life outside of the music should stay outside of the music and outside of the public. All right, well said. So John Blackwell here. The John Blackwell Project forever, Gia. Now, now, what are, what are the plans? You got the record out. People are digging it. Just just out of the box. Um, you're gonna be doing some some touring dates, or people gonna see you out there playing live? Um, we're 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 working on some things now. Um, we we just missed the St. Lucia Jazz Festival. We were trying. We we got a call about that and um unfortunately we're not going to be able to perform this year because they're already booked up but we're, we're working on some jazz festivals for for next year and hopefully something still would come about for this year everybody's pretty busy doing a lot of things so um but but that won't ever stop um the the project 
if there is a performance in because when, if somebody's busy, I always make sure, and I, I have I have this on lock that there are alternate musicians to uh, fill the gap if one member can't make a show or something. Or if there's something happens, if something comes up and a couple people are busy, there's alternate people to fill that position. Okay, cool. Uh, namely, uh, if, if Paul Pesco can, if Paul Pesco can't make a show or something like that, I have the great Mike Scott to fill that gap because Mike played on, he knows the music and he's played on my latest DVD, uh, John Blackwell Master Series. And, and where can people go to get the, the new DVD? Um, you can go to Guitar Center or you can order it from HudsonMusic.com uh, or you can go to any drum store or any music store as far as um, as far as uh, Guitar Center or Sam Ash or any other major music store or a music store that sells instruments. Now, now you give a you give a lot of drum clinics all around the world, and, and people love seeing you play live. Always saying great things about you. If you had a chance, uh, someone who's passed away or a present drummer to go witness a drum clinic, do you have a couple people in mind? For for yourself to go see a for drum, me to go see somebody. Yeah, a, a couple drummers. It would, it would be Tony Williams. Oh, okay. Or, or uh, um, Art Blakey. Oh yeah, Owen wow. Jones. Yeah. I would go see those guys. Uh, Yogi Horton, the great Yogi Horton. Oh yeah, played, you know, Luther, um, right? Luther Vandross, uh, early hits and San, San, Astrid and Simpsons early hits. Oh, okay, yeah. Great Yogi Horton. Yeah, he I passed away. YouTube. That guy was phenomenal. Right. And he was also a good friend of my father, so oh, okay. I learned a lot from him when I was real young. How about Max Roach? Did you get into his playing? Oh, I, I met Max before, and that was an honor. And um, I've actually, uh, I have a video of Max doing a clinic, so. Yeah, I, I, the... The strangest but really nice concert I, I saw was actually up in Montreal, Quebec at the Jazz Festival. I saw Max Roach and uh, Mal Waldron, a duo concert. And uh, it was just piano and drums. And right. Mal Waldron was just chain-smoking cigarettes and look, kept on looking at his watch every time in between the songs. But uh, it, it was just a phenomenal show. Just interesting seeing them like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never got a chance to see him perform live. Right, right. I, but I did meet him, and that was on. So uh, I got a chance to meet Tony. Oh, did you? Okay. It was it was just him. They were take they were showing him a tour of Berkeley. Uh huh. Um, they were taking him on a tour of the school, and and um, being that Boston was his old stomping ground, I guess he had never walked into the school before. They actually around ninety six, or no, I'm sorry, ninety four. Yeah, it was 94 when they showed him the school. And he passed away in 97, but they were taking him on a tour of the school in 94. And I just so happened to be coming from a class. And they and the the uh, the, uh, the dean of the, the dean of the drum department, a uh, guy named, by the name of Dean Anderson, said, John. I said, yo. He said, you want to meet Tony Williams? I was like, yes. <laughs> right. And I saw him and I ran to him. I was like, oh, my God, Mr. Williams. Uh, it's an honor to meet you, sir. And he said, how you doing, John Blackwell? How you doing, Mr. Blackwell? I was like, wow, he said my name. Yeah. <laughs> so so, talk about your own personal uh, kit that you've been uh, working in the studio, your own drums, and what you've been using and adding to your arsenal. Um, over the years, I've, I've simplified my, my kit. I, whereas I used to play three toms, on top, three rack times, three floor times. Uh, you know, I, I've pretty much simplified myself down to just a, a you know, five piece kit. But sometimes I'll do six pieces. Uh -huh. And also, another situation is that I'm tr I, I want to, I feel like playing bigger drums, you know, than normal. It's, it's, it's better and also tuning my drums to a melodic to a more melodic type of feel you know like Tony Williams you know Tony Williams made music with his drum set alone you know whereas a lot of drummers you hear them and it's just you know Tony made music like you know so you know and it would 
be in a certain key. And I just, you know, I just thought that was just amazing that he could do all of that with 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 just a drum set. And um, so I've 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 narrowed down to that. You know, I still use uh, a crash, you know, crash ride, crash China behind me or whatever, and uh, hi hats. But uh, and also I've. You know, I'm, I'm a Tama and Dorsey. I, I have, uh, I, I use the Tama Star Classic uh, Elite Series or either Star Classic Babinga Birch Series. And also, um, I have, I'm very proud to, to let everybody know that I have my own signature snare drum with, uh, with, with Tama now called the JB Snare Drum. It's um, doing pretty well in the stores. And um, and then also I'm I'm now a, a Zosian and Dorsey uh, for cymbals and sticks, and I use the K series on for cymbals, and I have my own signature stick that I sold in stores called the John Blackwell Gia stick drumsticks. Hey, you you're all solid with the, with those endorsements. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let let me ask you about the physical uh, part of playing drums and. You know, how how about injuries through all these years, or or things that are sore after playing drums? Do you go through that? Um, I I I don't think so. I I but I gotta say I did have a serious injury on this last tour I just um, finished with a Japanese artist named Crystal K. Okay. Who I was touring with from October '09 to December '09. Um, during one of the shows, uh, uh, you know, she turned me loose. You know, of course, every night she introduced the band, and each musician that's introduced takes his drums. I mean, takes a solo on their craft, and she turned me loose. And of course, I, I'm going. I'm doing all my little crazy things that I do and spinning the sticks and all this stuff and I actually stood up you know uh, on one part of the solo uh, and I'm spinning my sticks and I'm hitting cymbals and stuff and I actually uh, that the pole the top pole the pole that sticks out of the hi-hat was uh, usually I cut that pole so it won't you know interfere or anything like that but this pole was not cut because it wasn't my kit it was a Tama gave me a loner kit so I, I didn't feel like it was it was my uh, it, was, it wasn't my call to cut that pole to keep it out of my way so this particular night I'm soloing I'm spinning the sticks and my hand came down wrong and the pole went through my left hand Ooh, wow! and cut me wide open and it was blood everywhere and I'm talking about serious blood not just little drip drip it was yeah. like my whole outfit was drenched. My shoes, my shoes had blood all over. My my foot pedals had blood, and I still played the show. Wow! <laughs> because the adre- adrenaline was running. Uh huh. It was running real. It was running. We we because we were. I mean that show was that was a kick butt show. We were killing every night, you know. So after the show was over. The adrenaline wore off, and that's when the pain hit, and they had to rush me to the hospital, and I had to get stitched up. And luckily, we had like a week off. Okay. And I had to, I had to really take it easy and and let that hand heal. And of course, they had me on painkillers and all this stuff. And by the time it was time to do some more shows, I was I was able to play, but I still had bandages and stuff. But that that you know now my hand is is healed and it's like it never happened. Yeah, I, I mean I've the heard. The only other serious injury I had before the, uh, before this injury was um, a show I was doing with Patty Labelle in, and uh, I think ninety eight or ninety nine, and we we actually um, was playing in Orlando and um, at this convention and. Um, the speaker, one of the speakers that was, um, one of the speakers that was, uh, rec- 
planned in the air. Uh-huh. Uh, was actually, either the chain popped or it wasn't latched up right. And that speaker fell on top of me. It was, it was a big speaker, not just one of the small, it was a huge speaker. Right. And it, it fell all over me, but I, I still was playing. But the same situation, when, you, when you're up there and you're feeling that show and you got this adrenaline running, you don't feel it. Right, right. But when the show is over, when they say, thank you, good night, <laughs> you're screaming. You, <laughs> you know, you go, oh my God, I'm in pain. You know, and they had to rush me to the hospital. Right, right. After that show and come to find out that that speaker actually chipped one of my shoulder bones. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. But um, other than that, I, I haven't had any any serious, serious injuries. I, 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 do, re I do remember one night where I was playing with Cameo and I actually hit the snare so hard that the stick popped and, and, and the stick split down the middle and the, the part, the, the tip of the stick spin, was spinning and it actually spin all the way until it hit me in my eye. Ooh, wow. Stabbed me in my eye and I didn't know until after the show that I had blood just all over my, all over my face. All oh, my eye and everything. I was like, "Oh my god!" So, so you had a few injuries. You had a few injuries. Uh, I, I got, I got, I was, I was killed, and I was killed some. Yeah, right. I, I, I've killed, and I was killed some. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yeah, we we've really enjoyed talking with John Blackwell as always, and we we hope he comes on the show uh, this summer. And if he's on the East Coast, come by the studio because we we have bands come and play in the studio all the time. So, you know, uh, we're to come in and give you John Blackwell project to come in there and, and and lay some funk down. Yeah, we would bring yeah. we'd, we'd give you the biggest. The drummer always gets the biggest spot in the studio. So, <laughs> yeah, so. uh we got to remind our, our listeners once again, if you're listening on WVOF or our 24-hour network, Upper Room with Joe Kelly and G. Dassault, johnblackwellproject.com, forever G in memory of his daughter, his angel, Gia, J-I-A. And uh, get this record. It's got world-class musicians. you got bassist Will Lee, Paul Pasco on guitar, Corey Bernhardt, and Mr. John Blackwell and Esperanza Spaulding and of course, Charlie Singleton. We're going to play another one you and Charlie do together. You're the one. Oh, yeah, that's, this is, uh, I love this one. I love Amazing, too, but, uh, you know, this is another. Yeah, we're, we're going to go for, we're going to go, uh, actually, we're going to go with three. We'll, we'll go out with You're the One, and uh, we talked about Mind of Jay, and uh, we'll we'll end it off with uh, You Asked for It. All right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's got to gotta thank you once again, Brother John, for coming thank on. Thank you. And uh, this is it, three in a row from Forever Gia, the John Blackwell Project.